Hello, my name is Brendan Mayer, and this is Plastic Attic Talks, a series of interviews we're doing with creators from all over to discuss their current projects and what we can expect from them in the future. Today, we are talking about Fried Berry, an eccentric South African film which gives viewers a romp through Cape Town from the perspective of the alien-possessed titular Barry, who is quite fried. Uh, joining us today to discuss the film, we have director Ryan Kruger and producer James C. Williamson. Uh, thanks for joining us, guys. How are you doing today? Good, good. Hello. <laughs> First of all, with this film, Fried Berry, it's really exciting, it's a lot of fun, uh, but it has quite a story behind it. And I wanted to ask both of you, uh, James and Ryan, if you could explain what the process has been going from short film to feature film and uh, as a producer getting on board with this feature film. Yeah, well, I shot the, the short film in 2017 and the short was just a three minute experimental, which was basically like a moment of a heroin addict in an abandoned building and then from that, you know, we we got uh, official selections and uh, festivals around the world. We started getting the fan art. So it was kind of cool and surprising that people took to my Barry like that. And and it was just crazy that people started doing this fan art. I knew I was kind of onto something, but at the same time, you know, I, d I didn't plan a feature. I met James uh, at a barbecue. We have, we have differing accounts the first time we met, but... <laughs> James got on board, we, we made some experimentals and that was only like a month in or so. And then I ran James and I was like, dude, I wanna, I've got an idea for a movie. I, I know how I wanna do it and stuff like that, but I wanna make it next month. And James was like, have you got a script? And I was like, no, because I need to explain, you know, the process of how, how we would make it. Yeah, when, when Ryan told me that he wanted to shoot a feature film that didn't have a script, um, it did sound like a completely insane idea and it, it still does sound like an insane idea but looking back on the whole process of shooting the film I couldn't imagine doing it any other way because of, of, of the way that we worked with Gary and just of like the way that the story developed as we were shooting you know you wouldn't have this kind of flexibility working on like big studio pictures where you know, you're literally allowed to just suddenly come up with, with an idea on set and you know, carry it out. You know, you would have to get approvals and everything like that. So it just made it such a fun, creative shooting process and something that is, you know, it's, it doesn't really happen that often in the film industry. Like James said, it was the only way to make it, but it was fun because it was, you know, the scene breakdown that I wrote for like 50% of the movie was just, was in three days and it was just it was very, very brief. Like Barry goes here, Barry goes there, he meets this person, he meets that person. So the movie was developing as we were going, but it was so good to be in the moment with those actors and, you know, come up with ideas. And some of the best gems that we came up with is is right there. And it was a split second decision where we go, ah, oh, this, this, this is gonna be better. I also wanted to talk to you about the social media marketing push behind Fried Berry because it's really something pretty unique uh, and ask if you could just comment on that a little bit and all these amazing shorts that have been coming out. Yeah, we, well, we've been shooting uh, all those little memes and stuff like throughout the process of making the film and some during lockdown because now I think with the run up to all the festivals, it's good to have that content and to push it out. It, it's so fun that we can do these kinds of things and these crazy memes and like, you know, Carol Baskin reaction videos because you can't do this with other movies. Like I, I come from a background of doing like publicity and marketing on lots of studio pictures. And there's like a handbook on how you market movies. And, you know, for, for my first movie, I'm just so glad that like we went just so balls to the wall and just made it so weird. And, you know, it's just this, it's this character of Barry. He's just so, magnetic that's the thing that we've always said james is the cool thing is that you know there's certain markets marketing that you can do with with feature films and there's only so much you can do but i think with fry barry and the character there's like no rules another question i wanted to ask uh, is about what we're doing right now uh which i've seen you both doing a lot of recently which is online press um you know, you've been working on this film for a long time and it's finally time to get it out there and the world has a bit of a problem uh, that makes it a little bit more difficult than normal. Uh, but you both have risen to the occasion incredibly and I wonder uh, what your thoughts have been on doing press this way and doing festivals this way. I, I think with the, well, you know, we just played a Fantaspoa in uh, Brazil 
And obviously, like, you know, when you make a film, your first film, you know, me and James would have loved to have gone to Fantasia and gone to all these all these places and, you know, to watch people react to the film and everything. And it would, it would have been awesome. And I've been waiting for that forever. And then this happens, this whole pandemic. But at the same time, I think it might be a blessing in disguise. I mean, like in Brazil, you know, they had a screening and we, we played like, we, you know, we had like, I think it was just under 4,000 views or something like that. You know, if it was in a cinema, we would have got, what, 300? maybe 250, 300. Yeah, I mean, most of our festivals that we're doing this year are all gonna be virtual or online festivals. And like Ryan says, it does suck not uh, being there in person. But at the same time, it's kind of, you know, we've had great virtual festival experiences so far. Uh, Fantaspoa was an awesome experience. Fantasia is, gonna, uh, is, is coming up now and they're really, really doing an awesome job. And this whole situation, the, this pandemic has kind of forced people to kind of get together and collaborate and interact more in these in these online spaces where for a movie like fried barry that's where a lot of the the discussion around the movie would be happening anyway so it's kind of like um you know this there's this coincidental shift where people are interacting a lot more online kind of because they have to and yeah it it, it in, in some way, I feel like maybe it has given the movie a little bit of an edge, but I think we'll have to wait until a few years from now to actually fully process, uh, you know, how 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 the pandemic has like changed the, uh, the, the the sort of festival system. Speaking of Fantasia Film Festival, Fried Berry is having its premiere later this month, August 20th through September 2nd, through Fantasia Film Festival, meaning that you are able to stream the film online on demand during that window. Uh, if you're a fan of cult films from the 80s, in particular things by Carpenter or Beerhoven or even David Lynch, you're going to find a lot to love with Fried Berry. Trust me on that one. A big thank you also to James and Ryan for joining us today. Pleasure. Thank you very much. And thank you for watching this episode of Plastic Attic Talks. Have a good one.